What's up guys, my name's Liam and today we're going to be talking about the Vaxi XC Wireless. There's been a lot of controversy about this mouse online, particularly around the weight. And you know, people have been claiming since the mouse is built to such high quality standards that that's why it has a bit of extra weight. So is that the case of the Vaxi XC Wireless? Let's find out. All right guys, so here we have the Vaxi XC Wireless. And I want to say that my impressions on this mouse uh, seeing the orange color online, um, you know, I thought it was okay. The reason that I opted for the orange color when I got this is I kind of wanted something different. I have a lot of blue mice, a lot of black mice, a lot of white mice. So I felt like this was kind of unique. And I do want to say that my first impressions of this mouse is that it looks way better in person um, than I thought that it was going to. I feel like the orange color is it's it's bright. It's vivid. Uh, it looks awesome. It stands out incredibly on a black mouse pad. Um, I have no problems losing my mouse at nighttime or anything like that. So gaming on this mouse, I just want to start off on the bat. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm going to list off about this mouse that were just kind of interesting to me and, and came to my attention while I was using it. Um, this is my first Vaxi product. So I came into this completely blind. I've been a big part of, you know, I'm always reading the mouse community and what people have to say. You know, I always see people trolling company, stuff like that. But uh, for, for whatever reason, Vaxi has always been, you know, held to this high standard. And people have just always like praised them like they're one of the most goaded brands out there. So honestly, upon receiving this mouse, I had extremely, extremely high expectations. I mean, especially with all the banger releases that we've had recently, uh, you know, stuff coming from Lamb Zoo, uh, G Wolf stepping up their game. So, you know, people are, are, are packing, you know, all kinds of punches now and, and the market's getting really competitive. You know, there's things that have been brought to my attention that I never even thought of in a gaming mouse before or even knew existed uh, until these companies have come and perfected these mice in such a way that it's just been an absolute amazing experience. This isn't really gonna be a video where I'm gonna to talk too much about the specs of the mouse and stuff like that. There's already been a ton of people that have re reviewed this mouse and I'm getting to it kind of late. So all I really wanna focus on is what's kind of unique to my channel, which is talking about the, the personal user experience of this mouse and then obviously comparing it to other types of mice out there in different types of shapes. As far as the wireless connectivity, the competitive gaming mode on this, spot on it's it's phenomenal uh does uh does vaxi does vaxi meet their expectations uh when it comes to the wireless performance and quality of the mouse um i would say with as far as gaming goes the experience i didn't come across like any major issues with the connectivity or anything like that it felt spot on it honestly felt incredible so really impressed by that the battery life has been going great uh, you know, the 3395 sensor, the tracking has been phenomenal. It's been an absolutely amazing experience. One thing that uh, I like to bring up is is the weight. You know, I got the weight here on my copy coming in at 60 or 76 grams. And do you notice a difference? You know, when you're holding the mouse and you're comparing it to other mice in your hand, you don't notice that much of a difference. But when you really get down, you start using the mouse and gaming with it, um, as I'm sure you all know by now, that it does have huge skates on here. Um, I do like the skate option. I feel like it gives you a lot of control. Um, the thing is, is with this type of a skate option and with the weight of the mouse, it probably does make it feel a bit heavier than it is. So to be completely honest with you, and I know it's really an unfair comparison because for those of you that know, I mostly main uh, the Jewels HTX, which is a 40 gram mouse. So somebody like me coming from a smaller 40 gram mouse, um, up to a, you know, a mouse that's, that's bigger, weighs 76 grams, has these big skates on it. It honestly, it was really hard for me to get used to and adjust, but you know, through time, uh, I played around with it, messed around with it. I started getting more used to it and I started feeling more confident in my shots. So aside from that, everything about the mouse, that feels great. Let's go ahead and start off with the clicks. So the clicks to me, when I first got this mouse, uh, oddly enough, I had a ton of pre-travel on my right mouse button and I'll go over that in a, in a minute. It's kind of worked itself out and it's not as bad as it was when I first got it. I'm not sure necessarily it was causing the issue, but I still feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about this mouse and say that there's not a lot of pre-travel, but honestly on my copy, I'm getting, I'm getting a ton of pre-travel um, on the buttons one and two. The clicks honestly really took me off guard with this mouse and I'll drop a sound test here in just a second, but the best way I can describe these clicks to you comparing it to other offerings on the market, and I'm talking about stuff that I'm used to using like the Ninjutsu Sora, the Atlantis Mini, it's like really plasticky feeling uh, clicks. And the best way I can describe it to you is every time you click this button, it feels like it's kind of like 
just really plasticky, like you're smacking up against plastic a lot. And let me give you a sound test and I'll demonstrate it to another mouse. I'll see if you can hear it. I'm not gonna go that hard or get that crazy. Cause obviously if you get like crazy spammy and you go nuts on any mouse, you can get that plasticky feeling. But I feel like just with like very minimal or just like, like regular like gameplay style um, with using the mouse that it just feels really plasticky. And let's see here if you can hear this. So as you can see, the the so the best way I can describe the clicks is is again that they feel kind of like spongy almost. Um, lot, there's a lot of pre-travel, a lot of post-travel on my copy, and again, it just sounds like it's hitting plastic. And I'll show you like I'll give I'll give you the Lamzu Atlantis Mini for example. I'll do the same thing. All right. So as you can see there, that the comparison is with like the Lamzu. You know, obviously if you smack it hard enough you get that plasticky feeling. You see what I'm talking about? But that's what I'm talking about. Just like with game, with average normal use, you get that that uh, extreme like post-travel, pre-travel feeling on the buttons. And you know, not that this is like a bad or anything like, like it's terrible. Like it, it doesn't really impact your gameplay or anything like that. Obviously this is just, uh, just through my impressions on, on what I personally noticed about the mouse. Um, so, you know, personal preference, I do, I do know people, that's kind of how mice used to be with older styles and stuff like that. I do know people that maybe prefer that style, but again, I'm just trying to just let you know like what my observations were. Um, another thing that was really weird about the left and the right clicks on this mouse to me when I first got it is I haven't heard anybody talk about this yet, actually. Um, I was getting extreme grinding on my left click and my right click. And when I'm talking about grinding, I noticed it when I was playing Apex and when you're trying to track in a game, like there's times where like it'll get tense and I'll push down, you know, I'll be aiming and shooting while I'm tracking. So by moving left and right, while pushing down the buttons, you get some movement in the buttons sometimes, you know, if it's a tense situation or something like that. And what was happening is I was getting a lot of grinding going on. And so what I did is I pulled the mice out and I started inspecting it and I was looking at it and I was doing it. I was pushing the buttons down. I was going like this and it just kept happening and happening and happening. And it was wild. But what's really odd about it is the more I was doing it, the less it started happening. So I was playing around with it. I kept testing it out. And oddly enough, what happened is, is the grinding and scratching completely just stopped and went away. And now if I try my hardest, it doesn't happen. And I was trying to inspect the mouse. And from what I believe that the issue was, is if you can see in there, what they got is they got these little fins here. And I believe these fins are to kind of stop the button um, when it actuates and prevent it from sliding maybe on the on the base of the mouse as much. So what I believe was happening, and I don't know this for sure because I didn't open up the mouse or anything like that, but I think what's happening is I think the fins in there were like rubbing up and scratching against the top of mouse button one and two. And what, if I look in there closely, it looks like the, the top of the fins, I don't think you guys would really be able to see that, but it looks like they kind of got gr grinded down a little bit. So again, I'm not having that issue of the scratchy or grindy feeling at all anymore. Um, at first it was kind of worrisome. I didn't know if it was a switch. I didn't know what it was, but I'm pretty sure, uh, especially since the fact that it's completely has stopped now, that uh, that's what the that's what the uh, issue was. Another thing that's interesting about this mouse, um, the fronts of the buttons are kind of interesting to me. Whereas most mice, they're curved. You can't really like lift them up. I mean, if you dig in here, you can, but these are like really pointy and sharp on the edges. So like they're really easy to lift up if you play with like some type of a claw grip or something like that with this mouse. The scroll wheel uh, was kind of interesting for me to get used to because if you guys can see here, it's a lot, there's a lot of real estate of rubber on this. And let me see here. So, so the scroll wheel kind of bends a lot because there's a lot of rubber up there. Um, you know, aside from that, the scroll wheel works great. It feels great. It's just, you know, when I was messing around and, you know, I was doing my uh, B hopping and stuff like that, my wall jumping, the scroll on the side like that. It just, I feel like the scroll wheel kind of has a lot of play to it and kind of moves around. Not a bad thing or nothing. Just again, I'm just pointing out things I noticed that's a little different from my experience that I've had with other mice, you know. The shell honestly feels really flexible. Is how easy it is to actuate the side buttons.
And I was getting some popping on the rear of the mouse with the shell, but that stopped. So I'm not sure if something just wasn't seated properly or the screws weren't tightened down or something like that. But yeah, um, that's my overall experience with my first time with the with the Vaxi Wireless. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, honestly, I'm not trying to be negative in any way, shape or form. I love Vaxi. I love what they're doing. I love all my mice companies, you know. Um, you know, hopefully I can just point out this stuff. If Vaxi does watch this video, uh, amazing stuff. I'm really impressed with what you guys are doing here. I'm not being sarcastic or smart in any way. I think it's a great product. And I'm sorry to sit here. I don't want to sit here and like sound like I'm badgering or nitpicking the mouse or anything like that. There's just things about it, you know, that I just noticed that I thought, you know, were interesting. Maybe, you know, maybe it could be approved upon in the future or something like that. But overall, um, overall, just about everything that I noticed with this mouse. Again, you know, it's not like a major deal breaker. It's not any issues. It's not like I was playing in game and I was losing games because of quality of the mouse or anything like that. You know, some of these things are minor and, you know, I don't personally have a problem. I'm, you know, during gameplay, I've never actuated the, the side buttons uh, myself. So, um, you know, overall, it was a solid performer. It felt great in games. And uh, yeah, these are just some of the, the small things that I noticed about it. One shape that I feel like it's close to is I do feel like it's close to the Model O Pro. Uh, the, the, the hump is a bit higher here on the Vaxi mouse um, as opposed to the, the Glorious, the Model O Pro. It's a little lower, um, but overall, in honesty, they have a very similar feeling. This mouse does feel much more narrow. This feels wider. This is what they look like next to each other. Side comparison there. Humps here, tapers off. They have the sta same style hump where the hump, you know, tapers off, you know, smoothly, but but more aggressively than something like the G Pros we'll get to here in a second. So that's what we're looking like there. The Model Pro is coming in at 56 grams. And uh, you do notice a pretty big difference between the weight between these two. the G Pro Super Light. A lot of people have already, you know, in all the other reviews, always bring up the G Pro Super Light. And honestly, these are very similar. Um, the major differences, of course, are gonna be where this one, um, I do prefer the shape on the Vaxi. It's a bit wider. It tapers off quickly towards the rear where the G Pro has that really long, slow hump out the back so the G Pro definitely fills up your hands a lot more. That's about what you're looking looking at there with the with the Vaxi Wireless and the, the G Pro Superlight, 62 grams. Does the G Pro Superlight feel lighter? Yeah, it does feel a lot lighter. But, you know, aside from that, uh, pretty similar style mice. Um, overall, holding it in hands, they feel really similar. Just like I said, the G Pro has that extra um, bubble here in the back that fills up your palm a lot more. the Viper V2 Pro. And honestly, these feel very similar. The one difference is the hump is obviously much higher on the Vaxi than it is on the Razer mouse. And honestly, I feel like the Razer mouse might be a little bit wider. They're, they're about the same. So in the middle, I would say the Viper is just slightly more narrow, but in the rear, the Viper is slightly wider and it's just very minimal. But like I said, the, the biggest noticeable difference between these two shapes is the fact that the Viper overall feels like a way flatter mouse, whereas the Vaxi has the much more pronounced hump um, in the middle of the mouse there. Um, to be completely honest with you, this mouse to me just kind of feels almost like if a, a Viper V2 and a G Pro had a baby. Um, that's my my take on, on the mouse anyways. Comes in at 60 grams with grips on. the GOAT, the legend, the Dave 3. And as you guys can see here, I got the Faker Edition. Uh, review's gonna be dropping on this mouse later this week. I wanted to bring these out. And as you know, this is more of an Ergo mouse. Definitely feels much larger in the hands than the Vaxi. But again, these are some of the top tier mice that are out in the market. These are the mice that the pros are using. So, you know, I wanted to compare these shapes as best as I can for you guys. The Dave feels you know, the Dave, the base of the Dave is shorter, but as you can see, the top, the overall, the, the Dave just feels like a bigger mouse. As you can see, the hump's way higher. 
uh, the top is, is much higher. It's more pronounced. It's not as low. The front on this one is way lower than this one. So overall in hands, this just feels, this just feels like a, a much larger mouse. So there's a comparison between the two for you. And on my Dave, I'm getting a 61 grams. These my all these mice do feel a lot lighter um, than the Vaxi does. That's my final thoughts on the Vaxi XE wireless. And again, you know, I want to reiterate to you guys. You know, I know a lot of people like to, to badger like qualities on my stuff like that. That's absolutely not what I'm trying to do here. You know, I'm just pointing out small things. And honestly, I do think that all the things that I have brought up um, are pretty small. I think that just a little bit of a, a fine tuning can definitely button this up and, and fill this in. No issues in game, nothing that came across that was like hindering my gameplay or anything like that. Um, who would I recommend this mouse to? I would recommend this mouse to somebody that is just absolutely obsessed with the shape. Uh, obviously that's all I hear people talking about is how this is a go to shape. I do think it's all right. I do like, I do prefer this over the G pro super light a lot. Um, I do think it feels good overall. It is a great, great performing mouse The wireless connectivity on it. Spot on. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or if there's any other mice you'd like me to compare this to in the future, please let me know down in the comments. And aside from that, please subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future until next time, we'll see you guys later.